Walkabout was released in 1971 and was directed by Nicholas Rogue. It stars Jenny Augeter, Luke Rogue, and David Gopil and is loosely based on the novel by James Vance Marshall. It follows the story of two city-bred siblings who are stranded in the Australian outback where they learn to survive with the aid of an aboriginal boy on his walkabout, a ritual separation from the tribe. This is a movie I decided to watch from the 1001 movies you must see before you die, and it's one I knew very little about going into. The first I saw anything about this movie was actually noticing it had a 4K release of the Criterion Collection, but I knew next to nothing about the story, and that's always fun when you go into a movie completely blind, not knowing what you're going to get, and after watching it, I think this is a very special film, and I think it's one that's probably going to stick with me for quite some time long after I've watched it. And after seeing it, I'm definitely tempted to buying that 4K now. But before we get into my thoughts, let's do what we always do here and go behind the scenes to see just how this film was made. Nicholas Rogue had planned on making an adaptation of the novel Walkabout for some time, with the story being about children stranded by a plane crash, and then the indigenous boy, after leading them to safety, would die of the flu, which he contracted from them. But he was never able to find a script he was happy with until the playwright Edward Bond submitted a 14-page screenplay. It was only after this that he was happy with doing the film, and work soon began on his second feature film. Filming for the movie began in Sydney in August of 1969 and would later move to Alice Springs. Rogue would cast his own son, Luke, in the film as the younger boy during filming. Due to him not being Australian himself, he believed he was able to bring an outsider's eye to the Australian setting and improvise quite extensively during filming, filming pretty much whatever they could find, and the movie itself became a prime example of Rogue's directing style with strong visual composition from his experience as a cinematographer. The film was also scored by the famous composer John Barry, who was responsible for such scores as the James Bond films and later on Dances with Wolves and Chaplin. The film famously has a scene that has become rather controversial as time has changed since the film's release, where Ginny Augeter, who was 16 or 17 at the time, filmed a nude swimming scene with no one on set but Rogue with the camera, filmed at a distance. She has gone on to say she doesn't regret doing these scenes, but regrets how they have been taken out of context by perverted individuals. Due to the British Board of Film classification, the scene did not pose a problem at the time, but as more acts have been placed into effect over the years, it would be impossible to do something like this in the modern day. The film was even resubmitted during these acts, such as in 2003, where the film was reviewed and still believed not to be indecent. The movie also has several hunting and killing scenes with animals, but due to the animals not appearing to be suffering, it passed on several acts when looking at the animal protection. When the film was released, it did not do well in Australia, with critics debating if it was an embrace or reaction to the country's cultural and natural context. The film was also released in the U.S. under an R rating before being reduced to a PG on appeal. Since its release, though, it has been considered an important work of British and Australian cinema, and critics like Roger Ebert placed the film on his great movies list and is now seen as an important coming of age story. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's go into my thoughts on the film. Walkabout truly feels like a work of classic literature brought to life for the screen. It's a simple coming of age tale that has the filmmaking sensibilities of a classic. I love going into a movie feeling that way, and Walkabout does just that with the way it tells its story and its gorgeous cinematography. 
This movie reminded me a lot of older works of literature that we had to read throughout grade school from To Kill a Mockingbird to Lord of the Flies. It's a coming of age tale that feels utterly timeless and that's probably one of the biggest takeaways from the film. You feel like you're watching something special and at the end of the day I think this is a very special film. Before watching this movie, I had never seen any of Nicholas Rogue's work, but he's been in the industry for quite some time, mainly working in TV and never having quite the success as other directors. His most well-known movie besides this one that people have probably heard of is the 1990 Roald Dahl adaptation of The Witches. But when watching this movie, I was paying very close attention to the part of the film that really stuck out to me, mainly the cinematography and the way Nicholas Rogue was able to get some of the best images for his film by providing us with picturesque landscapes of Australian outback. It has a documentary style to it, like you're watching the true events of these children surviving in the wilderness, and I was even surprised to discover Rogue also served as the film cinematographer, and as I did more research, everything clicked for me. Rogue's main body of work comes not from directing, but the early days of being a camera operator and cinematographer on several big pictures, which include Lawrence of Arabia and Dr. Zhivago, where he served as a second unit cinematographer. And if you watch those movies, they are known for their dazzling vistas. So part of that is where he would have learned the craft. There's something truly hypnotic and picturesque about the images that Rogue chooses for the film, and I'm not just talking about the scenery itself, but there's also a huge focus on animals and particular religious imagery that could easily come off as pretentious if put in the hands of a lesser director. But in Rogue's hands, he gives meaning to them. The Australian outback at the start of the film feels like this wondrous wasteland of desert where danger lurks around every corner, and it's a very hostile environment for our characters at the start. But once they meet the Aboriginal boy on his walkabout, there is a beauty presented, and we see the land in a very different way. It's still a hostile place, but there is beauty, and the imagery on display evokes the Garden of Eden in a very nice touch, especially when they eat this fruit from a tree that just happens to have a snake in it. There's definitely a big humanitarian message in the film too, as we see after the kids eat from that tree and drink the water around it, the next day everything is dead. As if to say, humans take and destroy whatever they touch. And this is shown to us again later on in the film with poachers going out into the outback and killing animals for sport, while the aboriginal boy who is doing it in an almost ceremonial way for food. You also see the brother in the film begin to take a liking to the aboriginal boy by learning from him and behaving like him, almost rejecting the world he came from for this new, more exotic world. The sister, on the other hand, is respectful of the aboriginal boy, but her focus is on rejecting the natural world. And at the end of the film, she ends up rejecting the boy and thus that way of life as well. There's some themes littered throughout the film that I see such as death and resurrection, and I'm not sure how they fit into the film, but I'm aware of them being there, and perhaps looking at the film a second time would help in figuring that out. But still, there's a lot to take away from in this film, and it might not be fully clear on first watch, but regardless, the ideas the film presents are wonderful and definitely do a lot to deepen my overall appreciation of the film. As for other aspects of the film, I really love the performances across the board. This is not a very dialogue heavy film, but it manages to still bring us deeply rich characters that we care for. The brother and sister are left abandoned in the wilderness by their father who, based on his earlier scenes, has clearly gone through some sort of emotional crisis and decides to take things into his own hands by trying to take the life of his children and himself. After that, 
we really see a deep brother and sister bond between co-stars Jenny Augeter and Luke Rogue, who is the son of director Nicholas Rogue. And they really feel like siblings, and Augeter kind of adopts this mother figure kind of role. But the real star of this film is David Gulpil, who has very few English speaking lines, mainly speaking in his native tongue, and there's the great choice of not providing subtitles for this character. So we feel as lost as the brother and sister do. Gulpil is striking in this film and brings this mysterious and mystical nature to the film. And again, there's such a tenderness and intimacy given to the film that you really do care about the characters as they journey across the outback. The ending is also incredibly impactful with the girl all those years later living her life as normal, but she reflects fondly on her time with her brother and the Aboriginal boy. It calls back to a time of innocence and adventure, or perhaps it's more a loss of innocence, as it's during this time in their lives that they come into their own. It's also fitting as the sister had rejected that world, and now she remembers it with a sense of nostalgia. It's a powerful, very bittersweet ending, fitting for the film, and also very mature in its subject matter, but provides universal themes that I think anyone can learn from, which is why there's something truly timeless about this film that I think pushes it into classic territory for me. So, much of this film is absolutely perfect that I have very few things to actually complain about. I can see some people looking at this film and find the film boring if they're not willing to accept what the film is trying to convey, and I get that. It has a slow middle and the lack of dialogue and narrative momentum that could give you the impression that nothing is happening, but that's far from the truth. The film's script was quite short to begin with, so that does lend the film some creativity when it comes to how scenes are constructed and the dialogue between actors. But I think that's what gives it that documentary feel I really love about it. If I had any kind of complaint for me personally, it would simply be I don't understand the significance of a major character death in the last half of the film and had to look up on Wikipedia as to what was happening. And through that, I was able to understand but I also think to myself, maybe that's why this movie is so special. It's about characters that represent the audience getting involved in a world they don't fully understand. And we don't either. So, in a sense, it kind of shows us two different outcomes. We have the boy who learns and adopts this new lifestyle, and the sister who sees that this lifestyle is there and rejects it, and it shows two completely different schools of thought. I don't know if that is what the film was going for, but that's what I got out of the movie when I watched it just this one time. But maybe I'll pull something else from it on a rewatch. This film has given me a lot to think about, and I think only on rewatch and with time will my appreciation for this film grow. This is a great movie with beautiful cinematography and a real eye for detail and theme and incredible performances. It just feels like you're unearthing a long lost classic when you're watching it. And that for me makes it well worth the watch. There's some things I could have gone into more but I doubt it's a film a lot of my audience has heard of. And if you decide to watch this one, I want you to know as little as possible because that's how I watched the film and that's how I think the film should be viewed. And with all that said, I'm going to give Walkabout an 8 out of 10. I highly recommend checking out this film if you want to see some earlier Australian cinema told through a very intimate lens. I think it's definitely worth the watch and a very rewarding experience overall. I'm definitely interested in seeing some of Rogue's other films, especially the bigger ones, to see how his sensibilities from this film may carry over to his other work. But I want to thank you for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and stay positive.